If you spent two weeks painting 12 hours a day, what would you paint? For me, it was this Legio Sutravora Reaver Titan, the flagship of my 40K collection. Certainly the biggest, the one that has the most time invested into it, and he is glorious. His name is Stompy, he's a very good boy. And I had a thought recently, I wanna enter this guy in Golden Demon. I don't know what could possibly happen. He's so big and he has so much paint on him, but there's a few things I would like to do to get him ready for the case. Also, another reason why I wanna put him in the case is just to make the Games Workshop employees deal with this thing. It is seven pounds. This model is absolutely monstrous. And just the thought of them having to manhandle this guy into the glass case that is hopefully strong enough to support this thing's weight just brings a smile to my face. My little god machine has been an absolute blast to have hanging around my house, but I've never finished gluing him all together. I knew I wanted to come back and touch him up, so he's been a little rattly, but this will be the last time I pull him apart. If he's ever in pieces again, it'll be because the Golden Demon staff dropped him. The things I want to do to spruce up Stompy is freehand the symbol Legio Sutravora, finish working on the plaster sigils that decorate his armor, give his navy blue armor a little more grime, and put a few more layers of paint on the base. I'm not much of a freehand guy, I much prefer stencils and decals, but for Legio Sutravora, nothing like that exists. And at least the knee pad is nice and big, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it right. I have my reference and I just have to go for it. I thinned down some gray paint until it was almost water, and I got to work sketching. Getting the edge is the hardest part, once I'm working on the inside I'll have plenty of room for correcting mistakes. I used some painter's tape as a straight edge to help me get my lines nice and even, and then it was just trial and error, laying down a brush stroke, then correcting that brush stroke, rinse and repeat, for about two hours. The Legio Sutravora is a real Titan Legion from the Warhammer 40k history. The Legio Sutravora had humble beginnings starting off as the wardens of basically the war spot on Mars, the hollowed out mountain of Mons Satura. The Sutravora Titans didn't begrudge their assignment though, instead carrying it out with distinction. And when it was decided that some Titans would join the Emperor in his Great Crusade, the Sutravora were selected as one of the Legions basically because they wouldn't be missed, but they absolutely dominated in their new job, fighting directly alongside the Emperor and Horus and gaining fame and notoriety that they never had on Mars. They were the Rockstar Titan Legion, and their losses were always quickly replenished with brand new Titans to keep their Legion strong. However, this new fame went to their heads. They quickly adopted more violent and chauvinistic fighting styles, burning cities and planets they didn't need to, and when the Horus Heresy erupted, they quickly sided with the War Master as he promised them more fighting and glory. But in the Horus Heresy, the Legions didn't switch sides all at once, and there were always Loyalist holdouts, and my Titan represents one of those, a Puritan who didn't turn their back on the Imperium, or their namesake, the Mountain Sutura and so still wear the original seal with pride and hunt down those traitorous firemasters. I'm very happy with this design. Although I do want more titans, I never want to freehand this again. I might take a picture of it and turn it into a decal for future projects. Stompy's looking so good with his new knee. All right, now that his knee is filled in, he's feeling a lot more presentable. I don't want to put anything in the case that's not in my best. And speaking of my best, there's one more glaring flaw on the Titan to clean up. The plaster was the very last thing I finished on my Titan during my two weeks of painting, and I definitely phoned it in. I just didn't really have a strong idea of how to paint this, so I did gray with an oil wash on top. It got the job done, but now I need to perfect it. I decided that it is plaster, so I want to make it look like it has a very dry texture. I took some gray paint and a piece of sponge and stippled all over. This left paint all over, but especially on the edges and cracks. Then I broke out my dry brush and reinforced the design, dry brushing the edges and stippling it to lighten the edges of the wings, flowing papers, and the big old shield in the center. After that, I made a darker warm color and glazed this to create some more depth to the sculpt, in between the wings and on the overlap of the parchments, and finally an edge highlight of white paint. Yeah, that's much better. I was really unsatisfied with it before, but it just needed a little fussin'. Now it looks pretty good. And now I need to do all the script work. Luckily, I have one of these. I really like this magnifier on an arm. I've used sexy goggles in the past, but those make it hard to see everything else besides your model. This lens on an arm leaves the world normal and helps me get a better view of only the model. On the shield, I want to write out the story of Sutravora, starting with a big S as the start of a medieval script work. And to create the words, I filled up my size 5 brush with incredibly watery paint and I made a million little squiggly lines. Here and there to break up the text, I added some symbols, like tiny crosses separating the two pages, some dots, and a tiny little imperial aquila. It's like a page ripped right out of a 40k codex. On the other half of the shield, I decided to write something actually legible. Pretty much the mantra of Sutravora, burn them with fire. It's on theme and it works because they're all four letter words, so it fills up the space nicely. I actually found my synthetic brushes were working better for this than my nice sable ones. They hold a lot more paint, although it is probably because I have a lot more experience with synthetics than natural hair. 
Over the ribbons, I painted Suture Vora, and I'm pretty pleased with it, but it's looking a little too perfect, so I sponged some gray over top to add some age and damage to the letters. Oh, my hands are a little tingly after doing so much freehanding. I don't wanna paint more letters. I don't know if I ever wanna paint more letters. Maybe I can find some decals out there. I need to do something a little easier, and maybe a little violent. Stompy's pretty little face is my favorite part. It's so weird looking, like an angry bug. And it's magnetized so I can look at the crew inside. I think this will be the perfect spot for a little more storytelling. I took out my Dremel tool with a cutting blade and held my breath as I carefully placed the big ol' scar over his eye. My headcanon is that an Eldari Phantom Titan got one good swing on Stompy before he put it down with his Volcano Cannon. And that scar looks so cool, the Princeps didn't fix it, letting it shine proudly as part of the Titan's history. I used a brush on primer to prep the new naked resin and then added black and gray to shade the wound. Then I mixed up a few shades of light blue to stipple around the edge to integrate the scratches into the original paint job. The thing that really sells it is using some metallics in the trench and then taking neon green paint and adding in some of that object source lighting glowing into his scar. On the other side of his head, I glazed some gloss varnish in preparation for some decals. My Titan has a vendetta against the traitorous Firemasters and it's their life's mission to purge every last one of them from the galaxy. So I took some skulls and made some kill marks. Each small skull represents a traitor Firemaster Warhound Titan that Stompy has slain, and each large skull is a fellow Reaver that met its match. This Titan has racked up a pretty impressive body count over the last 10,000 years of service. Once my decals are applied, I glazed more gloss varnish over top to seal the decals, and then used a piece of sponge and a sharp brush to add in some more battle damage and paint chips to make the decals perfect. After that, I gave the whole head a coat of satin varnish, and he is looking even more formidable. Old Stompy is looking pretty darn good, but there's still something not quite right. I did a test model, this Knight Lancer, and it is painted with exactly the same colors as the Reaver, but this guy feels a little bit different. It's because he has one extra step. Streaking Grime on all the armor panels. Streaking Grime has a little bit of brown and a little bit of green in it, and it dries super matte, and I feel like it gives a little bit more of an industrial look. This guy got painted in 24 hours really quick for a knight of this size. I don't know how long it'll take to streaking grime a big ol' reaver, but I guess I'm gonna find out. Although I struggle a lot with oil paints and with opening this bottle apparently, I really like streaking grime. I think it's because this stuff comes pre-mixed and thin. It's a lot more beginner friendly than inventing a wash with art store paints. I poured myself out some of this gunk and spread it over his head. I started wiping it away while the paint was still wet. I don't want to leave behind much, just a general grimy tint and brown in all the recesses. He's currently fighting on a rainy, muddy world, so I want him to be decently dirty. Hmm, I never quite got these leg armors to stick on properly. I just used super glue. How's the other one doing? Might be time to pick up some more epoxy. As long as I've got these leg armors off, I can make the painting a little easier on myself. Now I can reach every one of his toesy woesies and get a nice grime over everything. This knocked down the bright orange flames and desaturated them a lot, which is exactly what I wanted. Hot rod flame paint job is a little flamboyant, but in the world of Warhammer, everything exists in a dark and depressing world. But you know it's not depressing? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have a new set of terrain every month. This month, it's the modular Gothic buildings. These impressive structures are designed with competitive wargaming in mind. They are the perfect size, shape, and have functional windows for all of your line of sight blocking needs. Well, the hardware store didn't have my favorite epoxy, JB Quick Weld. Instead, they had JB Minute Weld. JB Five Minute Epoxy is a liar. It takes a lot longer than five minutes. Hopefully, JB Minute Weld, which sets instantly, doesn't take too long to dry. Epoxy is a lot stronger than super glue, but the armor doesn't fit great, so it takes a lot of force to keep them in place while it dries, so I need this epoxy to set and hold fast. I spread on my glue and squished down the part and held it for a full minute, and then 10 extra minutes, and then five more minutes after that just to be sure, but the stress of the part was just too much for the glue and it fell right off. It's definitely not an instant bond, as the glue is still pretty soft even after 30 minutes. I did the best I could and it's holding for now. Urgh. Don't trust clear epoxies. It's not a strong bond after one minute or 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I'm sure legally it does exactly what it says in the tin, but it's not a very strong bond. It'll be better than the super glue that was on there before, but if anything's ever gonna break again, it'll probably be the leg armor. But now that I'm nice and mad, it's time to work on those guns. One thing I ran out of time on before was the guns. They all became a brass color, but having them be completely uniform makes them look a little small and boring. To spice them up, I took some turquoise paint and dabbed this over the rivets and into the crevices of the guns. 
This is a little like the opposite of a wash. Instead of creating shadows in the recesses, I'm highlighting them, making them glow with verdigris. Another flaw is that I didn't paint the stump on the bottom of the missile launcher. It was kind of an out of sight, out of mind situation, but now that I have some extra time, I can make sure everything is perfect. Old Stompy here probably represents about 300 hours of painting and modeling. Was it worth it? I think it was. This guy is a once in a lifetime painting and modeling opportunity. And I think the only thing left is the base. The base is a little bit slapped together and I think there's a few things I could do to perfect it. I love how his left foot interacts with the water on the base. It makes it feel much more real. His right foot, however, is just perfectly perched on top of what is supposed to be wet mud. He really should be sinking into the ground. So I rolled out a snake a milliput and made a line around his foot. I smeared it down onto the base and now his foot looks like it's actually pushing the ground out of its way. I smeared a thick layer of texture paste over the putty and while it was wet, I sprinkled on some small pebbles and sand. Once that was dry, it was time to blend it into my original paint job and this was tricky. I really need to do a better job of writing things down. I have no idea what browns I used before. I glazed and dry brushed on more and more browns, greens, reds, and tans until I had something that was decently close and I threw these colors onto the rest of the base to force it to look uniform. After that, I cleaned up my casual tees. I just slap chopped them before, so adding a few highlights will do a lot to make them look better while still not drawing any attention from the real star of the show, Old Stompy. Now the only thing left is the water. The resin I poured is an amber color, but the water spilling off is crystal clear. I mixed up some transparent antelope brown ink into gloss medium and sprayed this over the water to help it look muddy and disgusting. I got the base a little bit better rendered. It's really hard to paint the base now that there is a seven pound monstrosity standing on it. And there's no good way to pick this guy up or to actually hold it to get any really, really good painting done. But speaking of painting done, I am much happier with him now. He's looking a little bit more matte. He's looking a little bit more mean and menacing. And I don't know, it'll be really fun to have him in the case on display for everybody. And I did get a finalist pin in 2002. If this guy manages to get another finalist pin, I'll have to attach it somewhere on his body and integrate it into the Titan. Just adding more to the story. I painted a Warhound Titan and then I sold that one. Actually, I traded it for this guy. And here he stands. Oh, I'm so excited for Adepticon. And this Titan is coming with me. I'm gonna have to seat belt him in because he's that heavy. I don't want him rolling around in my car. Ah, thanks for watching.